is the concept video for the exponential of the matrix. So this is a tool to help us solve systems of differential equations. And um, the where, where it comes from is you go back to a regular differential equation, uh, first order, x prime equals ax, with the initial condition x0 equals x dot. Then we got the solution x of t equals e to the a t um, with x0 on front. And this worked because um, the derivative with respect to time of x0 um, e to the a t um, equaled a times x0 e to the a t. And so I have to satisfy this equation. So now with our system, x prime equals a x, or a is a matrix. We also would like to express um, x of t um, as e to the a t times some vector v. v is the eigenvector, of course. So that means our exponential has a property as the derivative with respect to time of e to the a t b has to equal a times e to the a t b, <clears throat> which is just a x. So now we need to define, um, we need to find out what is e to the a t. Well, um, we have the following definition in terms of Taylor series for e to the a, which is 1 plus a plus um, 1 over 2 factorial times a squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times a to the third. Um, and this equaled sum, a, a sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times a to the k. Um, for matrices, e to the a, where a is some matrix, equals the identity matrix plus the matrix a plus 1 over 2 factorial times the matrix a squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times the matrix a cubed. So this is a sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times a to the k power. And when we talk about taking a matrix to a power, that just means multiplying the matrix by itself. So a squared is a times a, a to the third is a times a times a, or alternatively, a squared times a, or a times a squared. Then we have the unique case a to the zero power is equal to the identity matrix. Identity matrix. Um, so, <clears throat> e to the a does not exist for all matrices, um, only for some matrices does the sum converge. Um, so we have a special case um, for diagonal matrices. And these look like this. Um, all the way to Rn. This is an n by n diagonal matrix. That means all the entries beside the diagonal entries are zero. Um, e to the a t, or sorry, e to the a is just equal to e to the r1, e to the r2, e to the r3, and e to the r4, <clears throat> all the way to e to the rn. So we just need to multiply 
or uh, take each of the diagonal entries to the exp their exponential. This only works for diagonal matrices. For other types of matrices, there is no formula for uh, or easy formula like this for e to the a. So now that we found out what e to the a is, um, we want to know what e to the a t is. Sorry about that. And e to the a t, or e to the t a, is equal to i plus t a plus 1 over 2 factorial t squared a squared. Let's remove these parentheses, actually. Um, plus 1 over 3 factorial t to the third, a to the third, and so on. And <clears throat> also, e to the ta times some vector v just equals i times v, which is just v, plus ta times v, plus t squared over 2 factorial a squared times v, plus t to the third over 3 factorial a to the third times v, and so on. <clears throat> so, um, now that we can multiply vectors by these exponentials of matrices, um, we have the following. If v times some power of a equals 0, for example, um, a squared b equals 0, or um, something else like that, then um, a to the third times b will also be 0, and a to the fourth times b, and so on. Um, all the powers of a times b from that point on will be 0. So that means we can take e to the t a times b, um, and let's just rewrite what we had before. All the terms after a squared b will go to zero. So we'll be just left with b plus t a b. So this really simplifies what we had before. Before we had an infinite sum of matrices. Now we just have a sum of two matrices or two vectors. Um, another example, so if a b equals zero. So this is simply the case where b is in the null space or kernel of a. Um, that means e to the t a. Um, this term will go to zero as well, so it'll just equal b. So if b is in the eigen or in the null space of a, then the exponential times b just equals b itself. This is a good property that we'll use. Um, so now we'll look at some more properties. of matrix exponentials. So if a times b equals b times a, then e to the a plus b equals e to the a times e to the b. And why this is doesn't really matter. It's just that we can use this result um, to help us with our solving of systems. So if you have the matrix T times A, <clears throat> um, we can add lambda Ti and subtract lambda Ti, and that's legal. So we can write this as um, lambda Ti plus T times A minus lambda I. So if that's how we can write T A, then we can write E to the T A as E to the lambda T I um, plus T A minus lambda T. Um, since using this property up here, 
we can rewrite this as e to the lambda t i times e to the t times a minus lambda i. And <clears throat> since um, e to the lambda t i is equal to e to the lambda t times i, because i is diagonal matrix, um, we can write this as e to the lambda t times i times this. But i multiplied with any matrix just gives you that matrix again. So that this simplifies to e to the lambda t times e to the t times a minus lambda i. So this really helps. If we know eigenvalues, we can now write e to the t a as a product of e to the lambda t times this e to the t times a minus lambda i. Um, and now if we turn this into, if we multiply this by the eigenvector b, um, we get this form for our solutions. And <clears throat> now it just remains to determine what b is. So we have a couple situations. So if b is in the null space of a minus lambda i, which is what we've been doing, we've been finding eigenvectors of a, of a by looking at the null space of a minus lambda i. So if this is true, then e to the t a, um, the same thing that happened up here will happen down here to this matrix. Um, since this um, quantity times this um, equals 0, this will truncate to e to the lambda t times um, b.